As mentioned in the last video, we're going to go ahead and take apart a hand drill to get the motor out of to create the motor for our rubber band. We will go ahead and disassemble and get this going. Now that we have it apart, I'm going through the pieces and checking and seeing what I need and what I don't need. Um, so I will verify the switch is all functioning and uh, look in the actual center cavity to see what kind of screw is in there so I can take the chuck part off. We only need the motor and the gearbox. We don't need the chuck part. That's the MOSFET. We won't need that. We won't need the battery charger and we won't need the 9 volt uh, adapter. So we're going to cut those off, the items that we don't need. Uh, we will hold on to the MOSFET, but we won't keep the aluminum block that goes with it because these things won't have time to overheat in the rubber band gun. So we're just going to take the big chunk of aluminum off to get it out of the way. However, I tend to hold on to those because you never know when you'll have a use for a giant aluminum block for a MOSFET. After that, I think that's pretty much all there is to it uh, until we start removing the chuck. So now we have to remove the chuck. Once you have the motor and the chuck out of the drill itself by just removing the screws, then you have to go into the top of it, open the chuck all the way up with a torque screw. Some are, some are Phillips and some are torque, and some are even straight, some of the older ones. And you come in here and this is this always got me, but you put this in here, and there's a screw down in the very bottom of here, and that screw in the bottom of there is always reverse thread, otherwise it would come out when you're trying to power drill something. So you reverse thread that screw. Well, you need a bit that fits it, and this bit does not fit it. Well, that's pretty loose. <clears throat> that sucker ain't budging. So, if it ain't budging, maybe it needs a little attention before it'll move. Uh, what do I have that I can hit it hard with? Let's see here. I have uh, this. I've done this before as well. Just get yourself a metal rod and give it a good smacking. Not in the hole, but on the side of it. You can loosen it up if it's stuck. See if that helps loosen it up any. Nah, it's just slipping. Oh, there we go. I finally got it. It's moving now. Okay, that's not the hardest part. That's actually generally not that hard. Unless the drill's been sitting for a long time. The harder part is getting the chuck off because it's been frozen in place for so long. So what I like to do is I like to go back down a little bit and get it all the way out first and go back down just a hair and then smack it one more time now that it's loose. And the whole thing falls apart. Well, most of it falls apart. So you see the chuck and everything starts to come apart there. We still have all this to get off, which we will get to momentarily. Next, we flip the motor over, uh, undo the motor from the gearbox, and we take all the gears out of the inside of the gearbox to get to the three pins at the bottom so that we can release the gearbox from the chuck. And there are a lot of little gears in here and you got to hold on to all those and there's uh, ball bearings and 
Lots of little pieces, so you gotta be careful not to lose any of them. Yeah, I'm gonna use the file to take this apart. Uh, in this video, I actually didn't catch the very point when I broke it for you. It's sometimes a little harder, but this one was real simple because I had already broke it for you. I had to push a little harder to get it the first time, but then it just spins free. Uh, and once it spins free, you just unscrew it from the chuck. Uh, be very careful. There are some small ball bearing parts in here that you don't want to fall out. So, and then once you have it free, you have your threaded part. I will now take the Turning it upside down was not a good idea. I did lose one of the ball bearings in that process. I will now take the uh, chuck part out and uh, chuck it. It's not any good because I broke it when I took it apart. Then I will take the gearbox and remove the ball bearings. Uh, very small pieces, so just be cautious not to lose them. Like I said, I lost one in this process. Uh, luckily, I had a spare. Now I'm going to take this apart and be a little more cautious by putting a plastic cup under it to catch all the pieces as I take them out. I uh, don't want to lose any more bearings. Uh, take the screws out of the chuck adjuster and then we'll take that off that is spring loaded so you have to be a little careful, not terribly careful because the spring's not that big. Uh, then we take the uh, lip there off. This one actually got bent when we were crushing the vise so I have to get a screwdriver to pry it off but just below that is where the bearings sit. So you do want to be cautious that you're not jerking it off too fast because the bearings will come flying out all over the place. There are also piston or metal rods in here that you need to take out. Uh, they generally sit in the same spot the bearings sit and they help the chuck adjuster. So you just push them through and get them out. After you take the motors apart, generally this is all the parts that you're left with. The parts that we need are, oh, look at that magnetic screwdriver. The parts that we need are all over here. And the parts that we don't need are this, 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 and this. So I generally don't hang on to this piece because I don't really have a use for it. Um, at least not that I found yet. It might even be two pieces. I've never taken one apart, but. I hang on to the spring just because you never know when you'll find a use for a spring. Odd shaped washer, which you could hang on to if you planned on using this entire encasing because this is this is a spring that or a uh, washer type that fits directly on top of here, uh, and it's got a groove that lines up directly with this sorry directly with this edge here. That little groove right there on the corner will line up with this little groove right here. So it does make a good locking mechanism if you're going to plan on using this piece right here. But our goal is to cut this whole chunk of plastic off here. Which gets a little complicated, but we'll get there in just a second. So actually I'm not going to be using that for mine. This piece I actually bent when I put it in the vise, but it isn't usually oblong like this. And what this piece is, is this is your bearing retainer. This whole, these bearings and these metal pens in place and it holds them inside of the holes that you see here uh, and it allows the spring to tension as you turn the steps in here which are kind of hard to see in this lighting but there are steps in here yeah, there are, you might be able to see them there a little bit. Different levels of steps. And that is what allows you to adjust your chuck tension on the drill. How much tension is on those springs is how much force is being put on the bearings in here and these pins, and how much push is being put down on those. And in turn, this item is on the inside. And these little steps will bounce off of those bearings. And when it bounces off those bearings, that's the chuck clicking, click, 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 click on these pins. So if you have it tightened all the way down, 
they get caught here and can't get by because there's too much tension because of the spring. If you have it loose, they can jump over it, and the looser it is, the easier they jump over, so the easier the chuck comes out in the end when it's, you're driving your drill. So this piece, I have to get my uh, uh, spring release and pinch this out of here. I don't have it. It's upstairs, I believe, in the garage. Uh, in frame. I think I took a picture of this. I'll show this picture. These springs have to be removed. Now, I do like the idea of using this entire piece of metal here, uh, this spinning thing, and not messing with this. That is a good idea, but it doesn't always fit inside of the rubber band guns that I'm building. So, I like to cut it off right here which doesn't leave much of a shaft to screw into. Currently this shaft, as we mentioned earlier, is that reverse thread shaft that this screw went into. And you can see here I'm tightening it as I turn left. Well, maybe not see it, but... <clears throat> and these are stuck in pretty good because they have Loctite on them. So you need to use a little force sometimes to get those free. Oops, now I'm trying to take it out and I didn't reverse it. It's just the nature, we always want to turn it the wrong way. So that shaft <clears throat> would be great to run the rubber band gun off of because it's already threaded, but as mentioned, it's reverse threaded. So I would either have to build a rod with a reverse thread on it or take and tap that out. This is smaller than a quarter inch and I buy quarter inch threaded rod. So all I do is I take a quarter inch thread uh, quarter inch tap and run down through this and re-thread the inside of this rod. Actually I'll drill it out a little bit just to get those threads out and then I'll run a quarter inch tap down there and re-thread it for a quarter inch which then my threaded rod that I can buy at any hardware store will be perfect and that will fit onto the dowel, uh, the uh, rolling pins. So my hands are a little greasy, but let me show you what I mean there. <coughs> Try and keep this in frame here. So there's a rolling pin with the handles and the rod removed. <coughs> it just spins freely in this these plastic shims here. In fact, yeah, they pop out. They don't go in very far. They're just a shim on the end that goes in and the bore in the side of this is all the way through but then I can take a quarter inch thread and it actually threads into those pretty good without stripping out so that's what I use that going through there and then the other end of the threaded rod because it's quarter inch is just tapped to go into there right now it won't fit because it's the wrong size I could also use a coupler and go onto the outside of this because this is the standard thread on the outside and just use a coupler. Now what that does is it leaves me a good amount of space in front of the motor, <clears throat> inch and a half, two inches maybe, I don't know, in front of the motor front that I need to protrude outside of the gun, the rubber band gun, which I will show you. Uh, I think on my first one, so we're at the stage right now where I've been working on these. So here's one that <clears throat> has the gearbox and part of that thing. So what I did was I cut off a lot of it and then I re-tapped this hole. Uh, and that's actually tapped to 3 8 so it's a little bigger than I wanted it tapped, but the quarter was just not big enough on this one. So I've kept the gearbox and the motor, and that's really all that's going to fit. I think I can get this in the shot. And it just barely fits. So I'm going to actually have to have the shaft sticking through the wood, which is fine. But let's see, here's one that I haven't, <clears throat> haven't taken off the adjustable chuck part yet and kept the original um, shaft. This shaft I've re-tapped to quarter inch and it's ready to go, but it's a much smaller motor and gearbox. So it fit with the chuck. 
So it really depends on what your motor slash gearbox is. Here's one that I had to take the gearbox off. Am I out of frame? No, I'm in frame. That one I had to take the gearbox, I'm sorry, the uh, chuck adjuster off to get it to fit inside of my box. Uh, I haven't run into one that doesn't fit after I've taken the gearbox off yet. So the problem is, let me grab the one we were working on. The problem is if you have to keep all of this, or if you're going to keep all of this, and the motor and the gearbox just fit inside of your box, all of the rest of the shaft has to stick out. <clears throat> Meaning it would be something like that. Where you have a lot sticking out. And you could actually <coughs> cut. Whoa, zooming in, not great on this camera. You could actually cut that shape around that whole black piece in your wood and then just have that sitting in the wood which would be great because these motors tend to spin inside the box unless you find a way to lock them down so that would be awesome but then you've got all this other stuff the woods only about that thick all this other stuff sticking out the end of the wood and it kind of looks odd it's better just to have the shaft sticking out as far as looks go another method that I found to hold the motors in place is to 3D print off a sleeve that goes around them. Now, after I printed this one, I realized I have no way to lock it in place except glue. So in the future print, I will print it with a cut down the center here and a bolt that goes through it where I can pinch the uh, motor. This one's really small, so it fits in there. With, I probably could have left the uh, chuck piece on this one because of how small it is. But you can see that's the part of the motor right there. And after you cut that chuck piece off, you have to do something to keep those bearings from jumping out because you need those bearings to be locked in place. Otherwise, that inner thing will just spin. So what I do is I just put that washer, and I'll show you back at the table. Actually, I can show you here. I put the washer back in front of those bearings and in this case, I just kind of super glued it back on so that it couldn't shift. So this is at this tightest speed. There's no chuck freedom. This is where the spring would sit right in front of this, pushing that plate down. On this one, it wasn't the same as the other one. It was just a washer, and the spring pushed against this washer. So I've cut that piece of plastic. I've cut that piece of plastic off of this one because it was just too long. So it would have had something like that exactly. <clears throat> in front of it and I cut it off down to about right there and then after I cut that off right there I drilled a hole in it and retapped it so this is probably the same type of motor now actually the one we're working on doesn't have this this is a triple gear there's three gears three gears and three gears so this one actually torques down a lot and this is a 12 volt, so this is a pretty powerful motor. <clears throat> this one's exactly the same. It's a triple one, two, three sets of gears. And the one we're working on over here is only two sets of gears. You can see I have one, two sets of gears. And it's usually plastic, metal, and then if there's another set, it's metal. So this is a, I don't know what they're calling, but this little thing right here is got the three pins on the back of it they fit into these plastic gears and there's three pins on the inside of here same thing as this Oops. same thing as this only the other one has the shaft coming out of the front of it instead of a gear so in a three geared one it has two of these and this piece here is what drives from the first to the second. So the front gears drive this thing, spinning this, and the second gear, and this is a uh, sun gear, I think is what they call it. 
planetary gear, I guess what they call it. Sun planetary? I'm not sure. Running out of battery here. I just got shut down a little bit. Sorry. But the sun planetary gear spins one, spinning the other, causing it to turn. The motor actually turns, causing this to turn, causing the main part of the drill to turn. But that's where they get the torque from is low torque, or not a lot of torque. You up the torque by adding more gears in. So one set ups it, and another set ups it even more. Uh, there's a lot of good videos out there on sun gears or planetary gears and how the torque works with them, but I don't, I'm not going to get into that because it's not part of this video. Anyways, these are the parts we need. These are the parts we don't need. I've got it apart. I'm going to clean up some of the grease and put some new grease in it because it was pretty gunky. That's the, that's the deal you get when you buy used old pieces of uh, things from a hardware store. Some of them even still have these old metal metal chucks on them. You know, might be rusted out, might not be. Everyone's a little different. So you got to play with it a little bit to try and figure out. But they all have a motor the same. Uh, voltage is always different. With these sun planetary gears driving something. And they almost all have the same plastic box on the front of them. So that's what you got to watch for. That's how you get them apart. And then obviously you got to put them back together and put them in the box, which we'll work on. Put them in the... Uh, guns, which will be our next project, is to get all the ones that you just saw laying on the ground hooked up with these motors inside of them and running off of battery packs, which we've talked about in a previous video, but we'll go into detail in the next video.